Hola vatos, thanks again for tuning in to yet another video of him is here coming at you from San Jose, California. Let's get in with the topic of today's ride, something that's not motorcycle related, but it's something that I can relate to and I know a thing or two about, and that's the border crisis that's going on right now down in Texas, Arizona, wherever you want to consider whatever passage or whatever route these folks are taking. Uh, is it a crisis? Honestly, I do believe it's a crisis. We have hundreds of thousands of, of uh, illegals coming through. You're always going to be a Mexican. You'll never be white. You know that, right? And they're not paying their dues. They're not doing none of that. And we don't even know um, anything about them. A lot of these folks that are coming through, we have no idea who they are. And I'm not saying that every single person is a, is a rapist or it's a bad hombre or whatever you want to call it, but there are a few people that are not here to, uh, to be on good terms and they're not here to do good things. They're here to make money selling drugs or worse than that, maybe human trafficking, maybe worse than that. There's a, there's a lot of different things that uh, some of these people have, have, uh, have bad intentions on both sides either on this side or or on the other side not everybody's going to be here to, to do the right thing to uh to work break their backs and and make a living wage and send that money to uh to mexico send it back back to their hometown back to their village back to their families and that's typically what you see and being a, a, a hispanic mexican chicano whatever <laughs> whatever you want to call it uh, I have I have family, familia that are over here, and s most of them have paid their dues. My father paid his dues. He also paid the paid the dues of uh, of his brothers, my uncles, of my tios, my tia. She's she's still over there in Mexico, but the culture in Mexico, men are supposed to work. Men are supposed to go if if by any means. Um, make a living wage, make a, a future for the family. They're, they're supposed to come over here on this side, mainly because of the minimum wage. Not to get too specific, but a dentist, you're looking at, at, a, at a month. If you're a dentist and you're trained, a person over here can still make more money than a dentist in Mexico. And by a person over here, I mean a person working minimum wage, $15 an hour maybe working at McDonald's, you can make more money over here than you would in Mexico, trained and having some kind of a certificate and having your own practice as a dentist. Yes, you make more money over here. Same thing with, uh, with what people were mentioning a couple years back, not to go off topic too much, but uh, a person working at Taco Bell or a manager working at Taco Bell uh, makes more money than a than a pilot in Mexico. I mean, that's that's the way it works. So a lot of people uh, they, they just come over here mainly for that, so they could send money back back home and and uh, raise their family and just give them a, a better living. Even though they're they're over here on the other side of of the country. Anyways, um, yes. Yeah, so I have family on both sides. I have family that that have done it the right way, like I said, and. There's a, there's a few folks in there, some cousins uh, that haven't gotten their dues or haven't paid their dues and they haven't they haven't done stuff the right way. They've done stuff illegally and some of those guys, some of those, some of my cousins, some of my deals, they've uh, found themselves in trouble with the law and get sent back and then they're back over here again within within a month or two. I'll be back. So, like I'm, like I'm, like I said, all of this is it a crisis? Honestly, looking at the numbers before the new administration, and then looking at the numbers now, it's uh, yes, it's it's not a challenge. It is a crisis. Uh, you have a few folks that are coming through from from the south border uh, that don't uh, that are not Salvadorians. They're not uh, from Mexico. Uh, there's people supposedly, like I said, this is the news, the media and you can't believe everything you read. So supposedly there's there's uh, Chinese people, there's uh, there's people from Europe coming through. Uh, 
I don't know if all of this is true. Supposedly they've they've caught in a few people that are on the uh, on the watch list, on the terrorist watch list. That's probably possible. But it's more than just criminals coming over here. You also have the the coyotes. Those are the guys that are that are just making <laughs> millions of dollars. And you probably hear it on the news that the cartel is it's just they're just making money like crazy right now and it's it's true uh, when some of my family members were coming over here illegally you were looking at uh, a payment of three thousand dollars per head and sometimes these uh, these coyotes coyotes I'm saying it whitewash I don't know those coyotes they have a, they have a tendency to withhold uh, these folks and probably even beat them for more money. It's happened before. I've seen some of my some of my aunts, some of my tias, where they would get the phone call and they would tell them, you know what, if you don't give us more money, we're gonna beat the crap out of these out of these folks, out of these kids. And it could be it could be false, it could be fake, but it does happen. Sometimes three thousand dollars just ain't enough and a lot of these vans, a lot of these uh, vehicles they could carry up to maybe 20 people if you've seen the news one of these trucks had I think had like 50 50 people one of the trucks in, in Texas uh, I, I didn't take any notes I don't have any notes on my on my dash so I'm just going off of the stuff that I've seen in the news and if you're looking at three thousand four thousand dollars per head that's a lot of money and then there's also those other homes there was a home that was raided recently in Texas and I believe there was over a hundred folks in the house and what what were they up to maybe they were withholding them maybe they were kidnapping them for more money or maybe there was a, a trafficking maybe they were doing something uh, far more sinister we don't know uh, the news the outlets because of the the new administration they don't like reporting on on this they like to kind of sweep this under the rug but last year everybody was about kids in cages and you know what I'm not gonna get into it but now they seem to be fine they seem to be okay with it AOC doesn't say anything anymore uh, so as far as we know Kamala Harris she's been uh, she's been assigned for this and she has yet to set foot in Texas but you know what that's not this video I digress getting back on topic Alright, so going back on the cartel. Now, there isn't just one cartel. The news, from my own experience, there's multiple different cartels. There's multiple different gangs. There's uh, every little village is pretty much a, a stronghold of, a, of some type of a gang, some type of a, of a cartel. I guess you could consider them that. And pretty much, Mexico is pretty much corrupt. There isn't really law and order anymore down over there. That's why you see a lot of these villagers take up arms up against the cartel. We're just going to call them the cartel because that's what the media calls them. So my family is from a small village. We call it El Varal. And that's about uh, 20 minutes from Benjamo. And it's right in between Abasolo and Benjamo. And it's about maybe an hour and a half, two hours from Guanajuato. What's in Mexico? Mexicans and that's pretty uh, deep south of uh, Mexico so uh, yes yeah, so I these these uh, these their stories and I, I, don't ha I haven't experienced anything like this when I go down over there it's been about two years but we pretty much know from what we've heard not to take any fancy belongings avoid uh, flashing too much money or anything like that because these cartels uh, they, they, they just have their eyes open and they're looking at uh, who comes and who brings what and what uh, people are flashing and in these in these villages everybody knows one another they're, they're pretty small towns and depending on the village you, you have a couple hundred people living and like I said everybody knows each other they know who's doing what or who's visiting who and sometimes sometimes some of these uh, some of these folks that come up here to work they work their butts off and then they'll come back down and they'll probably bring the truck around they'll have a brand new truck a brand new Chevy Silverado 
and they'll drive it over there just to kind of flaunt it, floss it, and uh, show off. You know, I left the village poor and now I'm coming back with a brand new 2021 uh, brand new truck. And this happens quite quite a bit. And recently, i say maybe the last 10 years, the cartel have been just taking more control of these uh, villages. And, and you do see it. Sometimes some of these folks come in and the cartel will come over. Let's just say it's you. The cartel will come over and tell you, you know what? You have a nice truck. You, you might not even know the person. And then they'll be like, you know what? Before you leave, before you go back to the United States, I want you to leave your truck here. Leave your keys here, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take it from you. So you could enjoy it. <laughs> Imagine someone telling you this: you could enjoy it, enjoy your time here, but before you go back, you, you make sure you leave your keys here. And a lot of these folks they'll freak out because they know these guys are serious, and they'll take off. They'll take off in the truck. And they'll try to get their way back over here to the United States, thinking they're they're safe. That's that's the wrong move. Like I said, a lot of these folks know each other. They know who lives who, who lives where, and who's uh who's who's that boy, uh, who who does that kid belong to? I, that's pretty much how it works over there in these small villages. Oh, see, sí, ese Jose, see, sí, ese es el niño de María. Uh huh. Oh, see, sí, es el este chiquillo de. Uh, Eh, este Rogelio, eh, ajá, sí, sí, ese es Eduardo, you know, that's, that's how these people know each other. And you might make it maybe halfway, and they'll give you a call, or worse, you might even make it all the way over here, and they'll call you, and they'll be like, you know what, we're over here with your mom, we're over here with your family, we're over here with your aunt, you know, whatever family member you still have over there, they'll pay them a visit, and they'll be like, hey, where's uh, Rafael's truck? We told them to leave it here, and you're, it's it's very dangerous. They they will kill your family for for your truck. They've done they've done worse for less. They've killed people over fish when they're trying to tax people. Uh, yes, they they've done that. They've killed fishermen for far less. You don't think these folks are gonna kill your family over a thirty thousand uh, thirty thousand dollar truck? Of course they will. And like I said. They'll visit your family. They'll threaten your family. You'll have to take it back. And I've seen it. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. People, they have to make the trip back, and they'll leave the truck. But a lot of the times, that, that's, that might not be enough. Something like that, now you piss them off. All right, now, whenever you send your family money, typically 400 depending on how much they make, depending on, on how much they send, they're going to tax that. Just because you play dumb, and you try to mess with us, and now we're gonna tax you every month. You better send your family some money, and along with that money, you better send us $200 as well, just for our troubles, for having to call you back. This this type of stuff happens all the time. So if you're telling me that's not a crisis, you don't think this kind of stuff's happening right now at the border? You don't think uh, these cartel, these gangs, are not uh, putting any type of tax on these kids? That they're sending over here what happens if you can't pay uh, we've seen a few things where they'll, they'll dump your children in, in the river we've seen some things uh, well they'll throw people and they'll just kill people and all of this it's it's real they just don't report on it and as far as the the, the control the threatening of the families uh, sometimes sometimes these folks can just be forced to work for the cartel and do different type of things we don't know what what their plans are maybe they'll come back around and request a favor we don't know uh, as far as we know you're over here let's just say you're you're uh, you're you're someone that got transferred over your family's still over there they still have connections to the cartel and the cartel is still in those cities in those villages they're, they're not moving out of, of those cities or villages they're still there with your family I think uh, the the people down there they have they're gonna have a very tough <laughs> they're gonna have a very tough time. Uh, we're not gonna see the full effect of this until until a couple years from now. Kind of like what we saw with uh, with Castro uh, when uh, back in Miami back in the what 80s. Like I said, I don't write any of this stuff down. Uh, 
Back when Miami was having those drug wars and thousands of people were dying, killing each other, that was uh, Castro's boat or whatever. He sent a bunch of a bunch of Cubanos, Cubans. He sent a bunch of Cubans over here, and it, it wasn't like their doctors, and <laughs> their surgeons, or their uh, teachers. It was there were criminals he was sending over. Criminals. If you've seen uh, Scarface, then you know all of that is is pretty. It's real. All of that is real. Uh, you have the movie. Scarface and then you have uh, documentaries on on the war on people just hundreds and hundreds of people dying every week and there were there were criminals there were gangs there were all kinds of different affiliations there weren't uh, surgeons like I said there weren't uh, doctors there weren't mathematicians or, or anything like that these were outlaws criminals and we saw what happened there Miami was a uh, it was pretty bad. So there is some benefits. This is, this is a long video. Uh, there is a few benefits. Yes, I do know of people that work 70 hours and they're paying a lot of taxes. If you're in, if you live in California, you know uh, double time, penalty pay, overtime, all of that gets taxed like crazy. Uh, I work a bunch of overtime and I don't really see a difference between my 40 hours and my 60 hour paychecks. There's not a, a big difference, but yes, they say you know what you'll get that money back at the end of the uh, at the end of the the year. But for a lot of these folks that are working on in these jobs and they're using a borrowed uh, social security or they're using a fake social security number, they're using somebody else's social security number. Yes, this is all fraud. Uh, they're uh, they're using and working 70, 80 hours a week. I know a few of them. That uh, that work blacktop, they put the uh, that black uh, adhesive in the in the parking lots. You know those jobs, the tar. It's a tough job. It's it's hard as hard as uh, it, it's a tough job. And and uh, those those guys, they're working 80 hours, 90 hours a week, and they're making a lot of overtime. But just like in California, all the overtime gets taxed up the yin yang. And for a lot of those folks that don't uh, file their taxes, they don't do n none of that, uh, then they're, they're pretty much losing out on all that money. And and the, the government, the IRS, uh, the state, they're all keeping that money. And I guess you could say that's some of those, I mean, for the argument that, uh, that these illegal immigrants are paying taxes and, and how the U.S., uh, the uh, the United States are benefiting from from uh, these uh, illegal immigrants. Yes, you could say that, but there's also the truth that some of these folks aren't doing none of that, and they're committing crime or they're doing something else. Uh, they're using the system. They're 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 uh, being provided with health care. Uh, you know, there's just. Uh, I mean, it's on both sides. It ain't everybody that's going to be working over here. And a lot of those folks that are working those 90-hour, uh, 60-hour jobs and they're paying their taxes, uh, a lot of that money gets sent back to uh, back to Mexico or back to uh, South America or whatever they're, they're sending the money to. There's going to be bad people and there's going to be good people. And... They have to kind of settle this down and we make sure that the right people are coming over because there's a lot of bad people that are coming through. So, wow, this video is long. You guys just stay out there, stay safe. Don't believe everything you read. Life's a risk. Get out there and ride. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of this whole border crisis or this whole border challenge. Yes, uh, like I said, you guys don't believe everything you read. Life's a risk. Get out there and ride. Later.